everyone, I'm Tori and today's video is the start of my 12 Days of Knitmas series. In this series, we're going to be looking at some really easy to make customizable projects using the circular knitting machine. Now, this time of year, it's turned cold, and if you are a person that celebrates gift giving this time of year, you probably have already started thinking, or hopefully you started thinking, about what am I going to get for those special people in my life? Now, gift giving shouldn't be a requirement. You shouldn't feel like you have to just run out and buy something at the store to give your closest friends and family. So making those gifts can really add that personal touch, but it doesn't have to take a lot of your time, but it can still be really super special for all of the different types of people in your life. So today's video, we're going to start with one of my favorite projects that I actually use on a regular basis and that's the cup cozy. Now you may have also heard this called a cozy, a pint cozy, a beer cozy, a uh, ice cream cozy. There's so many different terms for this item. Essentially, it's a way to keep your hands cool or your hands warm depending on what you are using. So a couple of examples. So for a pint glass, I drink a lot of items with ice. And so having something like this is really uh, great. And I, this is one of the things I use all the time. Um, and you can customize the colors. You can make it fun. I actually added a little extra bow here. For the ice cream lover in your life, I'm not a huge ice cream lover, but I definitely know quite a few. Uh, these little pints are perfect for, uh, you know, eating right out of, and you could make those cozies to sit here so then your hands stay warm while you're eating your ice cream. This one, I added a little additional step here of making a little pom-pom and then kind of that 70s color scheme. So there's that way you can customize it. You can also do a couple other things. Again, depending on how um, creative you get or how much you're inspired by the person you're giving it to. So you can do something like buying these little charms and adding those to represent the personality of your recipient. You can get inspired by insects or objects and like this uh, bee. I love bees. My husband's name is Bill and I call him bee. Um, so we have our little bee here with wings. And if you want to get a little more advanced, this is not gonna be covered in this video, but you can also do uh, different techniques like creating a little braid on your little cozies. The one that we're gonna be looking at today is this style right here. And yes, I have a hot cup of tea right now because our weather here in Spokane, Washington, we just had our first snow. So this is a big inspiration for me to get this series done. So I have my hot cup of tea right here and then I have this little cozy. And what I like about this style is that you can actually add a button and you can fit it over an actual mug because mugs still, even though they retain, um, they retain their heat, but it's a really good way to add just that little extra touch. And then again, you can customize this with different patterns, stripes, you can, and I'll show you. I don't want to spill this anywhere, um, but this is one that I actually made for my brother's coffee shop. This was a prototype, so it looks a little off here, so don't judge, um, but I did make these for his little shop, and so you can even use iron-on vinyl on these as well. So in our tutorial today, we are actually going to be making this style right here, but then you can use your creativity and you know recipient as inspiration to really make that a special gift. Now, as I mentioned, I am going to be making 12 of these gift videos. I have a lot of ideas of what I want to show you, but because these videos really are for you, let me know in the comments if there's something specific you want me to walk through step by step to show you how to make for your gifts. Or maybe you just want to give a gift to yourself and there is nothing wrong with that either. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into making our basic cup cozy. And for today's project, we are going to be using the Centro 22 pin machine. So this machine is really great. It works up really quickly because the project um, is going to be a little bit smaller. And so if you have a 22 Centro or Addy, either of those are going to work for you. We are also going to use this on the tube setting. So we'll be able to use that on the tube, which is actually the simplest method. Speaking of simple, we are not using waste yarn. So those of you that are scared of waste yarn or don't use it very often, you don't need it for this project. So that is really great as well. You will, however, need a few other things. So you'll need a needle to cast off a darning needle of some kind. I find that the upturned needle works best on the smaller machine. It's easy to get in there so I don't drop any of those loops. You'll also of course need a pair of scissors, 
You will need a, another needle of some kind to attach the button. Um, so with that in mind, we also need a button of some kind. I really like these. I got these on Amazon in a pack. Um, in fact, I have the link to my Amazon affiliate store uh, down below. All of the tools that I use are there. These little buttons right here, you can paint them um, or I like to leave them natural. And you do want that needle that can fit through like that. Um, or if you don't have this type of uh, needle here, you can even just use a regular needle with thread instead of yarn. It's a different look, but it certainly will work. Now, speaking of yarn, we do also <laughs> want some yarn. I'm going to be using this Big Twist Reverb yarn. It's 100% premium ac acrylic. It is pretty fantastic. Um, I have actually used it with my bigger machine and I did not have any problems with it getting stuck. It is a four um, medium gauge which is really great and I do love the way that the colors present themselves. So we'll see. I've only made a beanie out of this um, exact fabric here so we'll see how it presents itself on the smaller project but I think for the person I'm making this gift for um, I think that these colors are going to be perfect. And then the last tool that you will need and I know this is a little more advanced if you don't crochet but you will need a crochet hook of some kind or you don't actually need a crochet hook you could um, just use the yarn around and what I'm talking about is on this part of the project right here I typically crochet just to give it a little bit of a cooler look but we could also if you don't have um, a crochet hook you could just add additional pieces of yarn and braid it as well so there's other options that you have um, to make this little loop here so those are the tools that we will need to get started with the project. All right, now for this, like I mentioned, we are not using waste yarn. So we are just going to cast on like we typically do. And because we are gonna be using these end yarns um, to crochet that little hoop there, or the hoop, the loop, um, you do wanna leave a little bit of a tail. And I just kind of eyeball it. I think it's about two, um, you know 24 inches or so. And then we're gonna cast on. Now I'm not gonna go in too much detail about this. If you need additional assistance with casting on, let me know, but there are a ton of videos out there. So with the 22 machine, we're gonna start under our black pin and then we're just going to go around each of our pins. So we get back. Then we're going to lock it in place and put it in our tensioner. So now we are going to begin and we are going to just knit 40 rows. And right now you can't really see, but I'm pulling out um, yarn just to make sure that it doesn't get stuck. And with this, it's a little too thick for that center tension guide. So we're going to go with the other side. Okay. So that's row one. Also, if you're using a Centro 22 pin or an Addy, well, I don't know if the Addy has this, but this one does not, it does not have a counter. So you need to either focus on this project and don't lose count, write down where you are with your rows, um, or use some kind of tracker to keep track. I do have a counter, but guess where it is? On um, my phone, and my phone's up here. So we're just going to go through 40 rows and keep those in my head um, until we get to the end. Okay, so we're back at the pin on row number 40. You'll see it starts, it's starting to take shape. It has some cute little colors in there. That's really great. Now, here's one other thing, again, to give you some customization options. If for some reason you, let's say you don't have a crochet hook, you don't have a button, and you just want to connect both sides, you certainly can do that. And that is, in fact, how 
for example, I made this one right here. Um, I did add a little pom-pom, but you can see here that I just attached those two sides there. Um, you can do that, absolutely. But keep in mind, if you do that, it's gonna be a lot smaller. And so where it might fit on like a little to-go cup like this, it may not fit on a mug. So depending on the person that you are creating for, what you envision them to use it for um, is gonna help you decide how big you wanna make it. So with this, we're at 40, and that's what I typically do. Um, feel free to make it a little bit bigger. If you wanna add like 10 more rows, like I said, if you aren't using a button to give it a little bit of biggerness, biggerness, a little bit bigger uh, circumference, by all means, you can do that. But we're gonna stick with this 40 right here because once we take it off, it is going to stretch. And this really is just for like a to-go cup for um, tea. So now that we are at our 40, mark. In fact, how thick is this? Yeah. That, oh, look, it's so, it's such a great fuzzy fabric. I like this. Um, okay. So we're going to take off enough um, and to cast off using the yarn, a big tip is just put it around your machine. You know, you need at least that much, right? So we need at least this much, but because I'm also going to crochet and finish it, I am going to take probably another foot as well and cut that off. Then we need to pop this, actually, we don't need to pop it in here, but it helps me. We are going to go around one time until we get back to that black pen. Make sure all those are under. Okay, here we are. Ooh, and see how that just dropped off? We need to make sure, be very careful when you come back, because if that drops off, you're gonna get some drop stitches. There we go, we caught that loop, thank you. And then use your finger to hold the loop to the left so that it doesn't pop off. Um, there's nothing worse than spending time working on this and having them pop off. Now, I will tell you, um, you just saw me make this. It maybe took five, six minutes to make those rows, and that's just because, um, you know, that's about how long it takes. So this is a very, very fast project to work up. Now, this is also why I use the hooked needle, because it makes it so much simpler with this 22. And I know some people do this, oop, and I just dropped one, come on. I'm trying to talk and do this at the same time, my brain. Um, so I know some people uh, use the crank to get back to the first pin. I have just found it super easy since it's such a lightweight um, little tool just to move the machine itself, but it's whatever works for you. Now I do need to crank the machine here just to get these last couple of loops out. There we go. Cool. So here is what our koozie looks like so far. Nothing exciting, but we're gonna finish this up and turn this into a great little gift. So to finish this project, we are going to cinch. So I just pulled this a little bit. We're gonna cinch it just a little. You don't wanna pull it too tight. Um, we do wanna make sure it still has a little bit of um, length there. So we don't want it super tight, but you do wanna make sure that it's locked in place. You don't want it coming apart. So there's a couple of ways you can do this and every person does things a little differently. Um, so for me, I am just going to go back through here. I like to do the mattress stitch style, one side to the other, um, but this, it's really up to personal preference. Just make sure that you get the top two loops on each side or the top loop from each side. So I'm just going back and forth and making sure I get that top loop and then that top loop. Okay, and when I get to the end, I actually go a little, I go a little bit further than just this little piece right here. And there we go. So that is 
pretty good. Now it's again up to you whether you want to knot this or not. I do recommend tying it in a knot. Um, obviously knots are not pretty, but you can kind of hide this in the project. And knotting it'll just make sure it does not come undone. There we go. Excellent. So that side's done and we're gonna do the same thing to our other side. So here we go, wiggly wiggly. Usually if we were making any other project, we would have used waste yarn so that we didn't have this ugly wiggle here, but because it's a cinch, look at this. So pretty, so fast. It's one of the only times I don't use waste yarn. Okay, good, just making sure I did not miss a little loop there. And we just want this to be about the same size. Again, we're just eyeballing it here. This is meant to be a fast make. Okay, and we're gonna mimic what we did on the other side. Just coming through. Now be careful if you get a big loop like this, which oftentimes you do when we don't use waste yarn, you do not wanna loop into that one or else it's gonna be out of shape. So just make sure that you find that a loop maybe right next to it that's a little bit tighter. Wonderful. Okay, so that part is now complete. We have our tube, we have our two sides all ready to go. Now we do want to test this. So let's grab, let's grab our pint glass because that's a little bit bigger than the travel. Pop that down. And so for a pint glass, you'll find that this knit stretches a lot. So if you wanted to just, as I mentioned before, if you don't have a button, you could take this same yarn right here and on the inside, um, you could do the same mattress stitch here and then flip it over and it'll be completely, that seam will be pretty um, hidden. And then you can even, if you wanted to, you know, wrap yarn around it a few times just to finish it off. So that is one way, but we are going to add our little crochet just to add the button. So you'll pick your side, whichever side you want to use um, for the crochet. I'm just gonna use this one because it doesn't really matter. I guess it matters how you want that to look, but it's all pretty much the same. Although see how with some of those, um, those colored yarns that have different um, patterns on them, you might find one side does look better because look, this does, this looks like a mistake to me. It's not, it's just what happens with the yarn, um, but that's what I want on the inside. So I'm gonna keep that in mind as I continue working on this. So let's take a closer look at crocheting. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna take our uh, crochet hook and I'm using a five millimeter. This is the one that I use most often. I love it. Um, I love it just for crocheting in general, but it also works well on finishing knitting machine projects. So what I'm gonna look for over on this side, again, I wanna go over like one more stitch from the knot that we made. And I'm gonna go through a couple of those loops on both sides. Okay, and then that's gonna help anchor the crochet um, row, the crochet loop in place. So we're gonna do that, pull the yarn over, and then just pull it through. And that's it. So now it's anchored in place, and we're just gonna do a few crochet, easy for me to say, crochet stitches. So there is one, and we're just doing just a simple crochet. So bring your loop around, helps if you put your non-dominant hand um, and hold the base of the chain and then pull through. Okay, so there's two. Go around again, hold the base, three. Go around again, four. And then around again, and five. Now I find five is the perfect number. It may look tiny. Um, so when I first did this, I think I did 10 rows when I was practicing um, on uh, um, some examples. And uh, 10 just makes it too loose and it falls off. So you, remember, this is knit. This is knit. So it is going to stretch. So we're just going to do five for this project here. And then just like we did on the other side, we're going to find a loop that's pretty far on the outside. We want this to be on the outside. Okay, so let me do that again. So you're gonna take your needle, put it through the loop, 
yarn around, okay? And then we're actually gonna do a slip stitch here, just like that. Lastly, you're gonna take that same yarn, pull it through, and then just keep pulling, and that's gonna make a knot. So now we have our little crochet loop right here, and then we're gonna attach the button. Now, don't worry about this. This is just hanging out, but we're actually gonna end up putting this into, or weaving this, hiding it. We're gonna hide it in between the layers because remember, this is two layers, which works really well for hiding those yarns. But we're not gonna do that just yet. Um, what I have found just from making so many different projects is sometimes I will weave in the yarn or I'll cut it off um, and then I'll realize, oh, it would have been helpful to have. So I'm going to leave it there. Probably won't need it, but it's just something that I'm teaching myself to do. So now remember, we want to find that side that we want is the outside. And so we want this to be the inside. Excellent. So this is our inside. And then we're going to put the button on this side. So now we're going to use that long piece of yarn from that side. So we'll take our button, kind of figure out where you want it. Make sure that you do bring it in. If you put it here, you're, it's going to again stretch and it's not going to work the way you want it to. So you definitely want to bring it in to about here. I know it looks odd, but this is a great place to anchor it. And we're going to grab this needle right here. Um, I would prefer a um, um, a needle that has a dull end, but I don't have one, um, surprisingly, that's not skinny enough to fit through the button. So I have to use this one. And I'm gonna use my little tool here to pull that through my needle. There we go. And of course now it wants to stick because it's super fuzzy. Okay. Now, when we attach a button, what we're going to do first, okay, so we know where we want it. We don't want this to be this yarn to just go across, right? If you go across, you're going to see just one single yarn and it's not going to look good. So we're actually going to put this yarn through between the two layers. So you can't see it on this side. It's not coming through and it's not visible here. We're just going to go up to that button. In fact, you could go up to the button and through that first hole. And then you're just gonna give it a little tuck. Don't pull too hard, because if you pull too hard, it's gonna pull this corner in. So now we have our first piece through. Now I do stitch through both layers just to help prevent the button from falling off because we're using yarn. So I do a crisscross pattern, which I also think is super cute. Okay, so we just did one, and then come up from the bottom, Pull it all the way through. Want to do? Want to pull it taut? This isn't like putting on a button for clothing. When you use um, buttons on clothing, you definitely want to have a sh shank, shacket. What is the term I'm looking for? You definitely want to make sure there's enough space because you'll be unbuttoning and buttoning all the time. For this, it's more of a decorative feature. Um, it does have a use, but I'm gonna say we don't need to. I haven't had any problems. Okay, back down, and now we have our cute little crisscross. Now, if your button is big enough and if your yarn is not that thick, you may be able to go through maybe one or two more times, which can help with stability. Let's see. Oh, barely. And you there. Now, when you go through more, you'll see that it does change. It doesn't quite look as cute because this acrylic is pilling. Um, so I don't have that same crisscross look, but I think it's okay. And see, that one won't even go through. Dang it. All right. Let's see if I can get it back through there. That is the problem with working with yarn. Sometimes it gets a little too thick and it won't. Oh, there we go. I think I got it. Maybe. Oh, yes. Okay. Whew. Okay. So here, how cute is that? On the back, what we're going to do is because this is going to be on the inside, we are going to tie this off. So we're going to take our needle and we're going to pull through the layers. So essentially you're going to go through all those layers. 
And then I am going to add a knot in here just to secure it because I do want to make sure that it's secure. And then I probably will do one more knot. There we go. Excellent. Okay, so I feel like that's pretty secure. So then our last step is going to be to weave in our tails. So it's easier just to cut the tails a little bit shorter for me. So we're gonna start there. And again, when we put this through, we do wanna make sure that it is not showing on the other side. And I'm just going to push this needle as far as I can get it. And then I'm just gonna give it a tug, trying to get that whole piece of yarn in there. And if you can't, you can always trim it more. Excellent. All right, one more. Now with this one, you'll notice I'm actually going through that place that we tied off before. I'm not getting anything from there. <laughs> Come on, get in there, get in. There we go. Excellent. Okay, so now we have our little button, and here is our adorable little cozy how it looks on this pint glass. So here we have it on our pint glass. I mean, it's so cute. But also, little coffee seeds in there. Always make a great visual. On our to-go mug, it has its own little winter sweater. Keeps your hands warm, or keep your hands cool, right? Or again, For the ice cream lover in your life, they have their own little ice cream cozy. Thank you so much for joining me for the first day of the 12 Days of Knitmas. I will add this video to the 12 Days of Knitmas playlist as well as the other videos as they come out. If there's another project you'd like to see, don't forget to pop that down below in the comments. I also have the link to my Amazon storefront down below um, if you're looking for certain tools that I use. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out. So that's it, everybody. Until next time, see ya.